Welcome to class 11 English classes conducted by your English teacher Monica Kaur. Before I start with Hornbill chapter, please I request you to like and subscribe my channel. Chapter 4 Landscape of the Soul part 1 Hello students, welcome back class 11 english classes students this is the first class of 2021 and let me wish you a very happy new year as well as a prosperous academic year may you all have the best of your life this time okay students now let's start today we are going to start with a hornbill part 1 of the chapter 4 landscape of the soul written by nathali trovoroy Let's talk about this chapter. This chapter actually is uh, is not at all a fi- fiction chapter. It's a non-fiction chapter. It's based on the real uh, journey of a uh, of the art and the art here we are going to study is about the Chinese as well as European art. Okay? In this chapter we uh, this chapter is being divided into the two parts. the first phase of this chapter where we are going to study about the chinese and european art with that we are going to study about more about chinese art and the used philosophical element of zen shui with that yin yang and middle void and the second part is being related with the uh, that outsider art raw art or art brute okay now before we will start with the Uh, that the main agenda let's go through with the author now author nathali trovoroy actually was born in uh, in february 2nd 1975 in flanders holland she is very well alive by profession she is an art historian and because of her love for that art only she started even writing the books on the different art forms as well as on to the art on to the old architectures even it's been heard that she might be going to write on to the old architecture of uh, that uh, delhi delhi is also and uh, there it is uh, chandni chowk and jama masjid hope uh, we will get it soon okay now what is the theme of this chapter now as the chapter is based on uh, that real so the theme is also real because the chapter is about art so the theme is on art so what is the theme the theme is what that all form of art tries to achieve perfect essence of inner life and spirituality means every art form it's any sort of the art form whether it's a uh, means art form of dance or uh, music or what else if we learn it by our inner soul or by our inner heart then only we are able to spread it properly in the world otherwise the connectivity with the audience would not be in there so today after the theme let's talk about the textual expressions uh, that in the uh, that uh, lesson okay the first is anecdote anecdote means that when a short type a very small uh, that uh, for time time when any incident or event occur there we use this word that is called anecdote okay next is delicate realism now what is delicate realism it is the alluring quality of the art which makes it seem real means even if you are copying some form of art but when you are practicing that art it seems to be real it gives you that you haven't means anyhow copied it at any point so when you are giving any art form uh, in the audience it should be look real even although it is of a copying from any other art okay so let's start with the summary of the chapter students now students 
uh, actually this as i told you this chapter is divided into the two parts now the first part is that firstly understand the difference between european and chinese art now here european art is what that they learn european art is also known as western art that they learn the things and then they copy those things okay uh, although and then here the chinese they also learn the things they copy but they put all the essence of what soul spiritual essence as well as mind essence in that painting whereas western art requires your naked eye only to see the art to judge it as it is but chinese painting wanted the balance of your soul and uh, that uh, uh, that soul energy mind energy and physical energy to understand the real art form so this is the difference between western and chinese art so chinese art to prove it that how they make it there are the three stories in this chapter the first story is about the budao ji who was the 8th century very well known and popular and renowned painter okay he was being called by at that times uh, that uh, uh, emperor zhuangzong okay now this zhuangzong called him and uh, told him to make a painting for that empty wall of his palace wu dao ji made a very beautiful painting and when he brought that painting it was so beautiful a uh, beautiful outside only that emperor just uh, means moved out of his mind he was engrossed with the outer uh, that attraction so much that he did not listen to budao ji who was telling him the thing that the inner beauty is much more than the outer beauty he did not listen to who dao ji who was telling that he made a cave where he put one of the spirit over there and of that cave in that painting there is a magical door which opened with the clap of his hand he wanted emperor to travel with him inside that painting okay but emperor was so very well attracted toward outside that attraction that beautiful and vibrant colors only he did not hear it wu dao ji clap his uh, that uh, clap his hands that door open he entered uh, the cave and suddenly the door closed by the time emperor got consciousness that was too late because not only budao ji but also that painting vanished from uh, from that uh, that wall not only from wall students it's from the world also and this the it signifies the painting which vanishes signifies that knowledge should be should be from your soul should be from your heart not only from your mind okay the second uh, story tells us that someone asked a chinese painter to draw the dragon eye but he refused because somewhere else else he fear of that what if they would not understand so then his dragon would fly out of the painting third story tells us what that after learning you will also create a many creative and real uh, things okay now the third uh, that uh, that third story tells us about antrep who himself was a painter and was having a studio painting studio okay art studio there was a boy called quinton matsis by profession he was blacksmith but he fallen in love with antrep's daughter he wanted to get married but antrep refused because he was not at all a painter by nature and like this means uh, he was refused but he was given a chance that if he made a real painting on the empty panel of his uh, that uh, studio's entrance door so then he would going to 
somewhere else he would going to uh, that uh, look on to his proposal but quentin mcfee too was not knowing anything else about art so what he did that he learned the art when he was confident uh, confident enough that yes he was going to not create such a realism uh, that art so he went inside the studio of of aunt rap at night and he made a beautiful but a real fly in the morning when aunt rap on the uh, that open the door suddenly what he felt that something had flew over from her from his his that head he was doing like this okay but then he felt that that it was nothing suddenly he envisioned that empty panel which was now being painted with a beautiful fly it looked so real that even he judged it that something had had flew out or over from his head so this was uh, means the kind of the art that to be made or whenever you are taking any type of the knowledge it should be like this so quentin mcfee was not only accepted by aunt rep but he was also given the ownership of that art studio okay now let's study about the chinese that philosophical element in chinese paintings that is sensui sensui means mountain and water now mountain has the factor of yang yang means yang has the masculine element in it or a masculine significance in it now mountain stands with the face upward to the sky okay means what else the struggles come or the problems come it would not going to surrender and and water is the uh, is the element with yin now yin has the feminine element now feminine element what shows that water comes uh, comes from heaven and settle down on the earth it flows continuously it flows it never stop it pro it is in the liquid form it provide coolness from where it moves out so it has a feminine element which provide a coolness a sacrificing even in spite of of the struggles in the life now there is a third element which combine all the elements of the chinese art that is the middle void now what is the middle void middle void is the white painted emptied stage in the uh, that in their painting okay now why they kept it uh, means that empty only they paint white because it shows uh, it shows us a meditative uh, that part meditative means where conversation happen where we may talk to each other and so that we may stay at one stage together this middle void is being given is being given place in the chinese painting so that all the aspects of the nature must stay at one stage together middle void is also known as the yoga pranayam kind of a, a thing also where it heals our mind and soul so that our body togetherly may move on with with further and with good energies okay now the second phase of the chapter is about the outsider art uh, that is art brut and art raw now what is these uh, these things now actually this term outsider art was firstly been introduced introduced by jean de buffet in 1940 he himself was a french painter when he introduced this type of the art no one else in his fraternity or no one else in that era accepted this outsider art they refused to accept now what is outsider art 
outsider art is that art that where you have not have a proper trained formal training from any school institute or academy but it is your creativity that has lead you towards to that point fine okay now this was been this art was been refuted but you know students one of the indian raw artist brood artist spread this art all over the world and made it acceptable and that artist was none other than nick chand who had created a garbage land into a beautiful monument like rock garden at chandigarh he had cut down the rocks he had made the creature from the thrown away objects like uh, tubes fused the bulbs then thrown away bangles not only this that the rocks the tiles the marbles which we throw it as like a concrete material we throw it after uh, using it or when we a people are not in use he recycled all the things and then made a beautiful garden that is called rock garden at chandigarh and he was the one person who actually after creating it was become so popular that in 2005 because of his that creation because of his that brood art creation in 2005 london brood art magazine actually had given owner by issuing one of an article on on his this art by giving a title and that title was what a woman by the waterfall his creation rock garden was given given a title by the london brood art magazine in 2005 and that was a woman by the waterfall okay not only this that uh, that he was he was getting recognition in london but it was in switzerland belgium italy and many other countries also called him to spread this type of the art for many uh, that speeches he was being called and was being honored honored in many the big big museums also so students this whole and whole chapter is about the ana- analysis that we have to do with our knowledge i hope that you people have understood this chapter i'll be coming back soon with the next uh, that chapter with my next video but before i leave students what you have to do yes what you have to do like share and subscribe my channel and do not forget to ring the bell icon for the further notifications please be safe and may you have the best of this 2021 year bye bye these are the three questions from the summarized chapter